This is episode 323 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion. More music, more problems, Morales. Today, I'm joined by Marcel. Time for next Vroom 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 Manzano. Yeah, maybe. You get it, you're itching to buy another a, a new car, swap out the one you got? Well, uh, I gave out, uh, well, I not gave out, I sold the Alpha, the Alpha Rail. Yeah. Uh, and um, I miss Vroom Vroom. Oh, Kale's you want. car does not go Vroom Vroom. It does Kale's not go Vroom like, Vroom. Vroom. You're also That's going like 10 miles an hour at a time downtown. So real you're real downtown excited. Chicago, where are you going to Vroom anyway? Real excited. Vroom I went to Vroom. Indiana. Like that was like a lot of room, room, room opportunity. <laughs> I took one. I took one drive once in a while, and I got to go room. And then you're just gonna regret it, and you just next time be like, I regret the room, room wasn't worth. But anyway, he's gonna sell it, sell it again. Room, room. It's just like, yeah. You know, if, as long as he's like making money on the purchases, I guess it ends up or at least breaking even. It it basically was for free. Nah, who knows? Spoiler alert: You never make money on cars. <laughs> I actually did on the on the Alpha. I, I bought it. I owned it for a year and a half, and I sold it for three thousand more than I bought it. Infra- well, that, that is true. Weird. Yeah, the car Inflation. market. Crazy. Yeah, I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot about the car market. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're also joined by Will Combine Hype Hegwood. That's right. Team Ten represent. Ryan, I have entered the gates of Boulder's Staniszewski. Yes, the third of its kind. People and will understand if they put those words in the correct order. I, I I don't video game anymore. I'm too old. I'm an old man. What are what are video games? Anyway, James Padme Hype Ritter. Uh, yeah, in more ways than one. They. Uh... Padme has been a dominating force in the meta lately, and also they dropped the teaser for it for Shatterpoint. Uh, very excited to put uh, some Padme and Handmaidens on the table. Nice. Nice. Well, as for announcements and news, we have a couple of big ones. We uh, posted, I posted on Patreon and on Discord yesterday. Um, it's it's official now. Um, for our Patreon, we are the the, the short version is uh, we're no longer shipping physical gifts for for patrons anymore and uh, the biggest reason why we gave three main reasons number one um is compliance with amg's policies essentially uh, i know a couple people are like hey where's this written down blah blah blah. we had a very direct conversation with the uh the head of amg's um uh media relations committee and was like hey you guys did great at worlds good job but if you want to do this again, X, Y, and Z. And one of the issues is the fact that, you know, we do, we did for a long time create, um, you know, third party um, art and cards and things like that. And essentially, we're, 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 we're nixing that for that reason. Uh, second part producing uh physical items and shipping them the costs have just continued to rise and rise and rise and we've gotten to a point where um the the money coming it is costing more money to produce and ship you guys items than is coming in right we're we're operating at a deficit with just product uh for a long time i was kind of hoping maybe to find find a way and i was you know what this just isn't working anymore and the whole reason you guys are patrons is because you guys want to support us doing a thing and i didn't want that to be a detriment be like hey what what you know what's uh you know i'd rather keep being gsp and bringing you guys content than uh than making you know cards and stuff like that and the most, the 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 third reason is for me, uh, the most valuable resource that we all have, of course, is time, and uh, just the with the things I need to do with my family and choose to do with my family, and uh, my pursuit of my full time career as a music teacher and a composer. Um, I just don't have the time anymore to um, manage the shipping operations because it is a lot. It's a lot of emails, a lot of back and forth. Um, I cannot tell you 
how much return mail I have. And every time we get return mail, it kills me a little bit inside because it's literally just wasted money and wasted time. And it's because either like, uh, and got return mail from any, like a non-United States. We're playing like $15 for somebody to get a set of cards and it comes back because they didn't claim it from customs or something like that, or just didn't make it for whatever reason like that. Oh. Anyway, the fun part about this, I will tell you, uh, is I'm not sure how I'm going to pull it off, but we're going to have a GSP garage sale. All right. We're going to have a GSP garage sale at, I'm thinking during the world's times, we're going to have, we'll set up at a restaurant or something like that. We're going to sell some X-Wing out the trunk, basically. And uh, one of the things I want to do is with all this return mail, take a Sharpie to, to like the names and the addresses and be like a dollar each. What's inside? I literally don't know. You'll find out <laughs> just all all kinds of stuff. But anyway, those three reasons are uh, are the reason why we're not doing it. Um, and the other question that kind of came up was, well, what 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 do I get then if I'm a patron? Well, besides like supporting our content, paying for for things like um, we have uh, we're going to be going to California for the Golden State Games. We're going to be traveling to Canada for the St. Louis, not St. Louis, uh, St. Lawrence Open. Like we have all these events, LVO, all that stuff. Um, and we want to continue doing that. And the, real, real, the reality is that it all costs money, equipment all the stuff so um but i was like you know what we can do digital stuff for free so uh what i'm doing when i when i when i told my wife what i was gonna do she goes she goes you know you're opening like a floodgate that you can't turn off and i was like ah it's okay uh because it's gonna cost me a lot less time essentially um all the assets Okay, all the assets that we've we've collected when it comes to like uh, art we've commissioned and templates for like making cards and all this stuff, we're basically just giving it away now. All right, and depending on what level you are, you get access to different things. You can check out the posts that we made on Discord or Patreon for that exact thing. And I actually I was organizing the folders today, and you guys can do besides selling. You can do whatever you want with those things. You want to make some cool cards for your local store championship? Do it. You just need a template with like uh, with different uh, like uh, the, the the name. Where do I put the name and where do I put all that? I don't know how to make that myself. Boom! I got you. It's done. Just take copy paste, baby. You don't got to give us credit. Nothing. It's fine. Take it. Have fun with it. I'm excited to see what you guys do. Um, yeah. It'll be great. I'm excited to see what you guys do. And um, if we commission any other art in the future, we're just going to jump. We're just going to dump it in the folders as well. Uh, it's going to be great. I'm excited. We got five events on the docket so far uh, coming up from now all the way to January. And I think we're adding at least I got emails about two other ones that uh, we're trying to trying to figure out. But I'm going to tell you guys, this is a huge weight off my chest. Now, the other question that came up uh, in Discord and in Patreon, people were asking, I was like, what are you going to do about stream prices? I was like, well, we are behind on those. We're still going to get caught up. And I am working on a creative solution to basically I, – I have an idea. I'm not going to talk about it. I have an idea that will hopefully – will basically take it out of my hands but make it so that we can still give that stuff away. But um, – Stream prizes, we're going to be simplifying them and changing how we operate with those to also alleviate the pressure. My, my, just, my number one goal is to continue. I want to make GSP as stress-free as possible. Let us focus on the content, have fun playing X-Wing, and uh, take the business stuff and just be like, hey, we, we got the money so that we can go places and bring you guys content. And not have to worry about all the other stuff so we're simplifying it for the longest time we had uh the best value in in swag and uh kind of bit us to the butt in the end but hey we're here thank you so much for your support best way to support us is through patreon thank you to everybody who has and this episode is brought to you by our patrons so uh will and marcel i heard we're going to talk about some team usa combine stuff um by the way for anybody who doesn't know 
XTC? When when does that that actually get started? The actual tournament. When do I grab my U- Team USA flag and start waving it out my window for XTC? Uh, October. Um, I forget the exact date now. Do you remember the day, Marcel? The, the correct the correct answer is you should be waving your Team USA flag every day. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, <laughs> we we could use your support. That's true. Un- un- unless you want to go uh, and answer Paul Heaver's call and start waving your Puerto Rican flag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So so here's the here's the thing. Actually, I got reached out to 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 form a team Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican, yeah. if you guys don't know. Uh, and the reality is, I don't have the time right now. But I don't have the time now. Next year, maybe. I don't know. Could be fun. And, and and might as well actually throw that out there. If there is a uh, Puerto Rican, what was the rules? Uh, Puerto so you Rican have to be a descendant, right? Or, if if or you parents. if you're a like po- if, it, if it's in your descendancy, basically if you're from the Bronx, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> not quite. If you're if you're Puerto Rican or you live in Puerto Rico, Rico, does that count? Uh, not quite. You gotta be of Puerto Rican descent or. Or, or live in Puerto Rico, then you qualify for the team. Reach out yeah. so I can but, kind of get a database yeah. of people, and then hey, maybe maybe we give it a go. You know, who knows? Yeah, you need uh, pretty um, awesome. You could do your own you combine. Need more than half. Basically, you need three out of the five. So you need three players from from Puerto Rico. So if you got three players, the the other two can be uh, uh, what they call mercenaries. So you can you can snipe yourself a. Uh, a a a mercenary. I was trying to think of something clever, but a I ringer. can't. It's just <laughs> so we're like, it's all right, we're gonna get. Uh, we got three Puerto, Re- three, go. three Puerto Ricans, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. grab a Duncan Howard, and uh, <laughs> I'll take a crispy over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, nah. Uh, anyway, 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 anyways, the date you're getting, you can get your flag ready. Is October 16th is actually the official start of the group stage for XTC uh, Team the USA. Very, very excited. It's a prestigious event. I uh, love to support it here. Um, so we've been, as USA has the largest player base, and we're looking for the most dedicated people. So if you're out of the loop, I'm, I'm been assigned captain of the team. So we're running the combine. Just started this week. The last of the results are actually trickling in as we speak. So, uh, very exciting. Getting a lot of information, really getting a lot of cohesion as well between teams, uh, collecting a lot of data. That data is only going to help us uh, as we narrow down the list of applicants. Plus, as well, I mean, the, uh, the list selection process and pairing decisions are uh can only be benefited from this kind of data like who's attacking with what what's what didn't work well with uh as a defender those kind of things uh all really help out uh plus you know it gets us uh in the the mindset because i mean as as we all know team events you assign your pairing it's a little random but uh your parents are assigned so uh, it's not your typical Swiss rounds where you could see a little bit of everything or the same thing over and over again. Uh, Marcel, how's your team doing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Tommy and uh, uh, is uh, well. Tommy and let me think. I think it's. Oh, Tommy! Uh, Tommy and Ben are playing later. Yeah, on Ben. There you go. Tonight. So they they are playing and in, in actually in seven minutes. So I think oh, that's okay. the final match of the. So we yeah. made we're one and one. I hey, lost yeah, mine. You're, you're currently tied. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, so it's a decision game too. Levi oh, won wow. his. So we're uh, the tiebreaker will be here in a in a in a minute. Well, in nine a minute in ninety minutes. So by the <laughs> by the time we finish this, would you oh, no. would you decide on flying? I, I just flew the same Gen Con thing. Um, I don't think that, you know, if, if we, I just flew the same Gen Con thing because that's um, what I'd been flying and it's been doing well. I mean, I made cut at Gen Con. I won sure. the week before, but um, definitely I think just in this format, the the three arcs just is more three arcs in Padme. I'm not going to say Annie. Mm-hmm. But the three arcs in Padme are sure. are more um, suitable for this format. 
Um, and I'm not saying Annie because uh, I, I've actually tried a couple times um, on TTS three arcs Padme and Rick Ole that works pretty decent. And I'll also try three arcs Padme and the two uh, two point Z ninety fives to be additional like. Un sure. no, objectives, uh, objectives and annoyingnessness, um, mm -hmm. and that works pretty fine too. So I, mean, I don't think there's you can go wrong. And and actually, uh, one of the top uh, top eight in Gen Con was three arcs, Anakin and Obi. So I don't think you should go Obi over Padme, but um, maybe Obi instead of Anakin. It's no, fun. It's funny that that player yeah. at talking to him at Gen Con. I don't know if you guys mentioned this this week. I know it wasn't. <laughs> excuse me. I wasn't there, but uh, he mentioned that he was like, "Yeah, Obi was definitely the weakest link, and I wish I didn't have him. Wish I had something else." <laughs> Literally anybody else. That's fair. I mean, they they're they're cute together. Well, when they can share their own abilities, you could boost. Look at my theme. No, but the the whole thing is, I played him round seven, and he said. And he didn't use it in my game. And he said in all six rounds before, he never used either of their abilities. I mean, a, a free barrel roll or a free boost is always helpful. But it's it just one of those things that you just never even think that that's a thing. Even sure. even the people that are flying, like Dion, did you did you ever consider Anakin's free? Uh, is, Anakin, is Anakin the barrel roll? Yeah, Anakin's got the barrel roll. Obi Wan's the boost. Okay, uh, Dion, did you ever consider like a free barrel roll at all? Like, did you even know that was a possibility? Yes. Yeah, I was watching for it, and honestly, I I admitted this. Uh, I guess I didn't get to talk about my Gen Con, but I admitted this in person there. My Anakin play was terrible. I flew Luke's. Uh, 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 excuse me, Luke's. I flew Paul's. Uh, three arc Padme Anakin list. I just I just really don't understand what it's supposed to do. It was real awkward. It basically was at range three most of the time of things because it didn't know what to do. Clicking buttons when it could, and uh, it died in half the games. Um, so people like Dion fly the two Z ninety fives. You get better use out of it. I mean, honestly, if you're not practiced with it, two Z95s are just more practical, and you, you know where they're going to be, and you know what their role is. And are there not... are there two point Z95s? Yeah, there's two. two, two there's two two point Z95s. Nobody told me. I would have. I, I could have <laughs> been in that cut, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure we broke that down during our point well, breakdowns because it was a pretty big deal. My child uh, wasn't sleeping yet by then, man. I. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But have you slept since then? Barely. But um, Barely? Recent, recently, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, this like, listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest. When when somebody suggested like, oh, you need to get a sleep trainer. I was like, that is the most bougie sounding thing ever. Uh, completely worth it. And uh, my child is sleeping on a, on a predictable schedule now. And it is amazing. Uh, yes. Yes. Thumbs up. So how, how, how much of that was y you guys just not knowing what to do and or uh, like what? Well, that'll be that'll be for uh, X-Wing after dark. I'll, br I'll break after it down. Okay. How to sleep, how to sleep, train a child. Uh, uh, yeah, it sounds a bit involved. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the combine, we just are finishing up week one. We got two more. It's a very exciting process. Uh, to you uh, get in this team mindset uh, because it is uh, very different. Plus, we have to focus on five different factions, so it really takes that kind of collective information because uh, few people fly multiple factions, and like even fewer are like tournament practicing multiple factions as well. So, uh, other than that, it's, it's been going great. Though, um, speaking of team tournaments, there was a... Uh, did, I forget their letters now. Is e ECT is what they call it, Marcel? You might not, you might not be in on the, this loop. ETC. ETC. It the wouldn't European be the team European champion. championship team. It's... Oh, <laughs> yes, I said them in the wrong order, didn't I? Uh, that's why I was unsure of myself. Yes, the European team championships. I don't know, like, 
that makes a lot more sense. It, that is a lot more, um, what is the word? Ex uh, not exclusive, but like when you leave someone out purposely. Like you're Exclusionary? You're exclusionist. Exclusionary. Ex 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 exclusion. People are being excluded. Got it. We're being exclusion of because, because we, we don't live in Europe. Well, I mean, it was in Europe. Right. I mean, if, if you could get there, you could probably participate. <laughs> Give me a boat. Yeah, we'll send you on the FFG boat. See you in, <laughs> see you in a year or so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, don't, I didn't know much about it because it just happened this weekend and I was not paying uh, as much attention to it. But... I did uh, find out that, uh, according to their long shanks, uh, the Tartan Tuscans uh, beat out the rest of the competition. Uh, so that's very, very exciting. I got a list. I got the who? Their, uh, they call it Tartan Tuscans. Where are they from? Uh, from their from Tartan, obviously. From from Tartan, obviously. Uh, Hello. From from their <laughs> long shanks, uh, it looks like they were uh, Scottish and um, English. If I'm understanding. This oh, correctly. I get it. Tart tartan. Like, yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> he's, he's, he's yeah, I know. Just, so, just, just. So he, the, it just blew his mind. Yeah. So the top. The top three list out of that uh, event. Sorry, one second. Uh, this was... is a tartan right there, like the Scottish. Oh. The Scottish like skirts plaid. and like the plaid, yeah. Tan. I thought it was tan, but I guess it's tartan. So that's it right there. Mm, tartan. You know what? That makes a lot more sense. I learned that through this. But anyway, sorry, James. Go ahead. I was not expecting uh, him to grab a shoe there. Good. Continue. <laughs> no, Could have been anything. Well, Could have been anything. I fully expected him to go it. after his cat. I, I, I thought, thought it was a cat, cat, too. I thought it was a cat, too. <laughs> At this point, 95% of the time, it'll be a cat. Uh, so that top list coming out of that event was uh, Han uh, plus uh, Luke, Wedge, Keo, Sabine. Uh, and then another first order list doesn't have a list details, but it is first order. Uh, and then there's another first order list. Um, this is a Kylo Ren Whisper, Quick Draw, Whirlwind, Malaris, and Scorch Bomber. So, uh, pretty interesting list there. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the top three, the undefeateds coming out of that event. Two first order and a Rebel. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll post the, the links about it. We'll find out some more information. Uh, maybe we could dive deeper into uh, the the different matchups and things uh, once we've once we process through uh, all that information because there was uh, quite a few teams. I'm trying to think here. Uh, how, how deep is M in the alphabet? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve teams. So, great turnout for that. Um, like I said, I'll be interested to to dive into it more. Uh, as like I said, we're getting into this kind of team environment. Combine XTC. We got uh, the Nickel City Draft Leagues happening uh, very quickly. Uh, this week, I think that they're starting that up as well. So, a uh, very exciting time uh, for uh, team events, which is kind of strange because I think we've all been practicing for like world qualifiers and uh, store championships, right? So, um, it's interesting to see all that competitive like research and work um, put into the kind of team environment. Love it. So then, um, so actually just, just a curiosity. So we know, you know, the team USA combine, the goal is to find the team USA, right? right. How mm -hmm. is, 
so there's a there's an eva- th- this is the the evaluation process um, is I'm assuming like if you do the doing the best in the combine doesn't necessarily mean that you're being picked. It's just it's it's your performance throughout it. Your how are you communicating with your teammates? What was your list building strategy? Your pairing strategies and how you play? Those kind of four things all will be part of the de- determination on who's on the team. Exactly. Yeah, got we, we got to find five different factions, uh, players for each of them, and then two substitute players and as well. And I would add to that just your availability as well. Like, yeah, um, so this is yeah. the group so, stage is weekly. So, so um, uh, a secret to everyone that is participating, uh, the people that are not participating that are judging, um, you know, let's say J- James is helping. He's got admin access, and Ken, who is not playing, but he is. They James, have access. James, it, became our they, de facto to yeah they Thank have you, access like we uh, will and i don't i don't, have I don't know how like he just bamboozled have, me he was like uh, it was like, <laughs> it was like <laughs> you know long check. it was like yeah just plug in a long check just plug in a discord yeah but e- i'm easy. just saying like they have don't. access to your team chats and everything else so part of that evaluation is like so if you're sitting here arguing and fighting between your team members and stuff in your group just know that uh somebody is watching and saying you know you don't have to be. Well, they're they're reading it, so I'm just, just be mindful of that. Always watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be mindful of that. So all of it comes in front of that. My experience is so far is that everyone's having a great time. I don't know. I'm always ordinary. I mean, <laughs> well, not, not Marcel's team. Uh, apparently, uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, Ablongata is is like <laughs> permanent hyperdrive. That sounds about right. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. I'm excited to see who comes out of Team USA. Um, and before before we know, like, make sure you like let me know. We can make like a cool announcement video on who's on the team. We can make some make some make, make some cool. All right. All right. Um, we what, what was this? What um, I don't know who put this in here. Mal Malinas. That's, that was the. That was the tournament. Oh, that That's was the thing that just happened. Sorry. I got it. All right. So today <laughs> Nice. Today we're talking about uh Diamonds in the Rough. No, we're not watching Disney's Aladdin animated version. Uh but um we're just kind of we're, we're we're going to uh try to find some Diamonds in the Rough. Ryan, could you kind of give us a um an overview of the current meta and what is the problem we are trying to solve? Before us, we generally see two slash three general archetypes that you should assume to face in a Swiss of a large event or even store champ at least once. So you should have plans or plans uh, strategically in game and potentially stuff to relook at across all factions, pilots and upgrades that could be of consideration to look at again that weren't as prevalent before to try and go up against uh, the list of Han plus three ships or four ships. <clears throat> kind of the solidified close versions are uh, in the four ship version, uh, Han, Luke, Fen, Keo. In the five ship version, it's Han, Luke, or Fen, <clears throat> Wedge A-Wing, Keo A-Wing, Sabine TIE Fighter. And of course, the new Ur um, metaphors in the Triple Arc and Padme, and most of the time SOC Anakin that has been the most successful version, but as Marcel said, some people have tried out other things that maybe they themselves are much more familiar with or can grasp of, or maybe they feel like itself that it is better than SOC Anakin. So your job and our job right now is to see if we can look across the tools and upgrades and pilots across the game and what are pieces that maybe some people haven't looked at in a while or maybe are already kind of popular but maybe people should spend more time with those pieces 
uh, because they are poten they have potentially good matchups against them, or at least can help better against them. And you just have to find a way to build a list uh, uh, with said piece as well. Um, you know, and it's maybe it's not fighting both. It's it, it's hard for any list to say I'm going to cover all the bases. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat Han plus three. I'm gonna beat Han plus four. And I'm gonna beat the trip arc with Padme. Like it's a tall task to ask. Um, best you can do is just have a plan for all of them and maybe some tools specifically used against either one or maybe both if you think you got it with both. So. I'll start with something simple. Uh, bonus attacks are good, right? It sounds obvious, but maybe try to find stuff that shoots more than once. Um, a example could be what was mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, a first order list had good success utilizing quick draw, right? I6 is always going to shoot as long as it can shoot and has someone in arc and will shoot twice. Uh, for each turn, it loses a shield, basically. Um, out of its three shields, maybe four or five, I mean, whether you have shield upgrade or deuterium power cells, there are also ways to increase the time quick draw can uh, have its ability active. Um, whether it's against the Han or triple, like arcs don't want to see more shots going at them, especially when they are three dice attacks. Um, and Han uh, plus the three ships or four ships, those other ships may be more threatened by quick draw. Uh, because it shoots I6, and then as soon as they shoot or uh, take, loses a shield, Quick Draw doesn't have to shoot back at the same target that shot it. It can sh just perform an attack when it loses a shield. Uh, other bonus attacks Dengar. Um, Scum's in a little of a rough spot, but hey, Dengar can shoot twice, also at I6. Uh, a little bit different trigger. Um, you have stuff like Bodica in Rebels. Um, uh, we've seen a rebel list do well without Han, with Zach Bart placing second at Gen Con, utilizing Bodica as one of the main pieces with Luke, Fen, Hera, and Sabine TIE Fighter. Um, I think uh, this might sound kind of crazy because we haven't seen this one's a deep grab. We haven't seen the ship in a long time. Uh, in a B Wing, by the way, Gina Moonsong has enough loadout to take Plasma Torpedo and Proton Cannon. And if you can engineer a good way to shoot both in the same turn... What's up, Dion? I got slapped by Gina Moonsong with a double tap on one of my arcs. It's hurt. And it, it was, hurts, don't it? It was pop, pop, dead. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> plasma Tour first. Uh, keep the lock. So probably I, it, you can fit Plasma, Proton Cannon, FCS. So whether you do it just yourself, and by you have in that in, in in that faction, you have Hera. That if you really need it, yeah, Hera like, can give the focus or the or the or the reroll without spending your luck. Yeah, you you there are much multiple ways in Rebels to get a more efficient attack with that ship beyond just itself, but by itself at least, you lock something, you shoot it with a plasma torp, rip some shields off, and then proton cannon your way to extra and many more damage uh, onto your target, which, keep in mind, um, selfless can only trigger if it is in the attack arc. And a bullseye is a lot harder to get in the attack arc of. So between Gina and, let's say, if Luke's toting around too, um, I mean, that's, that's some serious firepower if you got Gina shooting a plasma, a proton, and then Luke shooting a proton or his primary right so uh, bonus attacks are good it's crazy to think of a b-wing but a plasma to a proton cannon sounds extremely dangerous to arcs but the trade-off is i personally am unsure how well that gina plays in against any of the han matchups though so there's your trade-off right people got to think about that stuff uh, if anyone's got other things to bring up along those lines too so you know, when uh, this was posted in our Discord earlier, I approached it a different way, or at least I, it came to me a different way, um, because, you know, you got you got the big bad meanies that are dominating the, um, you know, the the big events, right? And you're gonna see the same 
ships and in, in the main events but not everyone is out there trying well i'm not going to say trying not everyone is out there with the expectation that they're going to go you know five and zero, and then you know eight and one in a tournament and come out to winner. some people just want to excuse me some people just want to play and not feel dead in the water whenever those ships show up so it may not be like so I, I took this conversation not really coming at it as, you know, what ships can I use and what combinations can I play that will, tr you know, will, that will beat and put me ahead of these, like, ultra-efficient metal lists. Is what ships and what lists are out there are available that will allow me to compete with them, not basically get blown out maybe have an opportunity to win um but play more be allow me to kind of play the the fun stuff that i want to play on a league night but still not get blown out um so that's the way i, I was looking at it and just like which pieces allow you to do that and you know to your point i you know double shots one of the one that you didn't mention that i think is actually very very um very valid right now is chewbacca with uh, ray gunner uh chewbacca with ray gunner is actually a very valid ship right now so you can play the stuff that you want to play and you can put some uh, i think the chewbacca list that i was toying around with again it's not going to win any tournaments that's not what i'm saying it was uh chewbacca Eloat, Nian Num, Jarek, Jager, and BB-8. So three I-5s, Chewbacca, and BB-8. It, it's not, it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's not ultra efficient to where it's going to win major tournaments without, you know, some severe dice and some really good uh, flight. But you're not going to show up to any match and be like, okay, I lost this one. Like, it, it, it can deal with Han. It can deal with three arcs. Um, you know, it's got enough beef between the two T-70s and Chewbacca uh, and Jarek with the Magpulse at I-5. You know, so it's got tools to be able to help you compete. You're probably at a disadvantage in most of those meta matches, but you're not dead in the water and you're not going to get blown out and you're not going to feel like you did not enjoy the game. And I think that's probably the worst part of it is when you bring something that that you enjoy and you have fun and it's not necessarily meta and you go to a tournament and somebody brings one of these ultra efficient lists and then you get blown out and from round two or three you feel like you had no opportunity and it's just kind of demoralizing so that's the way i was looking at it it's like what can you bring that allows you to compete maybe you win maybe you don't uh you're not at a natural advantage because you brought this list but you're also not you know, it's it's fun things that you can bring that utilize some of the 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 ships that you don't normally use, and still allows you to be competitive, but play more of you know what you would play on a on a Tuesday night versus you know like a tournament. So um, anyway, so that you know when we asked the question on the on the Discord, that that's mm -hmm. kind of the way that I that I interpreted it. But but definitely Chewbacca for me is one of those pilots that that is um, just efficient enough and has that double shot opportunity to where you got to shoot at it. Uh, Ray Gunner gives it the the efficiency. And how did I have it loaded out? It's, I don't even know if this is the right way to to load it out. I had it with Agile Gunner, Leia Engine Upgrade, and the Millennium Falcon title. Uh, so basically not wasting my actions, uh, not getting myself stressed, even though you can stress yourself out <laughs> if somebody dies, you don't want to be double stressed at, you know, or triple stressed eventually. Uh, um, I, I think, I think Corndog McGraw, which I'm pretty sure I know who this is, but I'm not going to blow their cover because I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I know who it is. Uh, wants to know, but do you Wookiee yell across the table when you play Chewbacca? I do. I just yell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I Marcel yell. Marcel, Marcel, I need. I think I need to hear your best. Your best Chewbacca. Come on, okay, uh, okay, your best Chewbacca that. song. Go for it. No, I can't do it. 
got like a purr. You got like a purr, Wookie. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more like a like a Chewbacca yodel. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty good. It's a, it's a yodeling baka. Good, good effort. I appreciate I it. One reservation with Chewbacca. No, I, I do. It, it's a piece that I've looked at. Is I wish you could have Ray and Notorious, but you don't have. Ray. Yeah. Um, I've actually considered trying Chewbacca without Ray because I think Notorious is more important for him, dissuading people from shooting him. Because if that's usually the strategy, choice, right? They just go, you just go, go to yeah. Chewie, yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, so so I had him. Let's see, for um, in in the rebels, I I thought there's got to be something with the U wings uh-huh. there. Uh, they're five points, but they're still eight health with two agility and 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 a lot of neat neat abilities and their crew carriers. Uh-huh. So there might be something there. I don't know what it is. In um, in Empire, I think see, that one Empire's um... been done to heck. We did see Duncan have some success in his Rebel Store Champ win, and some people try to take out tr- the new Haritani, which is the Benthic, Kyle, Bodica instead of Garvin, Hera, A Wing, and Sabine Tie Fighter. Mm. Um, that one might be lacking in the firepower department because you only have Bodica and the U Wing and Kyle to provide three dice attacks. But um, if you want to really interrupt and mess with Ark's movement, get an I2 Ewing to get in their way. Like that's, yeah. You'll, you'll mess up some flight paths there. I, I wish there was one four-point Ewing, but um, we'll see. On the scum, uh, I think Rook Cast is an unexplored ship. He is one of the ones that can carry Notorious, Dead Man Switch, Veteran Tail Gunner, and be in a very efficient gun. Um, resistance I already talked about real quick uh, first order you guys already talked about quick draw mm-hmm. I think Kylo in the silencer is also not looked at enough uh, 7 points but you know <laughs> it's good I think um, we can go back to because you mentioned a ship in general the upgrade Notorious it went up but I think it could have a strong play when the Ark's born for this they can't be strained if they want to use born for this so if you have a ship that can draw some attention with Notorious, um, you can start forcing some weird decisions on your opponent to either not shoot that ship so they can keep Born for This active or shut off their Born for This so you can shoot at the targets you really want to and they don't have focuses available to them. Um, yeah. And, you know, Han doesn't exactly... like. You think of Han like, oh, he's just one agility, he'll take damage. Like, he cares about producing that evade uh-huh. can. um luke doesn't not, does not want to be one agility for a ter- for a scary shot like luke is still only six health on two agility if he's on one agility that's like you're about to get halved probably yeah that's why i like the rook specifically because it's uh i3 so he's shooting probably close to last he's got a front arc a back arc uh, shooting both front and back and just with being able to mod the offense going forward with both Notorious plus the um, the ability because you strain yourself and then you reroll with their strain. So your your offense is pretty um, pretty consistent and then you still get to shoot to the back and, and that note that that um, if you have somebody behind you, that ability because you're still strained, you shoot and you mod and then you're still strained when you shoot behind. So it's, it's a very modded shot. And it's how many health? 12 health. And it's one of those ships where you can use that reinforce as well. Mm-hmm. Um, to just say, like, don't shoot me. Because uh, if you shoot me, I'm going to be reinforced. I'm gonna, you're going to get notorious. And then you're going to strain yourself and, and do, a, do a ton of damage. So I, I, I like that ship. I think that ship's unexplored or underused. Um, I think it suffers from not having a lot of buddies that are, especially their foreign pointers. I think the four pointers and scum are terrible. But so when when I looked at this question, one of the ships that came to mind, and again, I 
Um, I'm not sure, but I, I'm asking more of a question. Do decimators have a place? Because the reason the decimator came to mind specifically, it's got a lot of chunk. It's got a lot of health. I think I think if it had boost, the answer would be for sure. It doesn't. You'd have to you have to manage your space. But does a decimator? I'm specifically maybe thinking about rack, um, who's a really good ship to be able to use the bow tie arc and play a similar game to Han, not exactly the same, but also have some solutions for when you get a little bit crowded. Um, it, it, does Decimator have a place? I'm also thinking about Death Troopers as well for a little bit of, uh, of control if you're not familiar with Death Troopers. Um, that's if you are at the end of the turn, if you're within range 0 to 1. Is that right, guys? 0 to 1? You end up with a stress. No. No, oh no no! no. When you that's execute bad. a maneuver, you yeah. can't. Well, you can't. You, you, when you would remove. At, it, yeah, if you're yeah, at range zero to one, you cannot remove stress. That's what it is. There it is. Uh, but you yeah. take seven sister to even double down on that. Make the well. It's less of a double down and more of a coverage across the board. Like I'm going to choose yeah. the absolute worst thing for you. Mm, Either yeah. you're going to keep that stress for an extra turn. Or I'm going to take it and weaponize it against you. Yeah, tractor. Like tractor. <laughs> yeah. Um, spoiler: Like, bangs yeah. don't want anything to do with staying stressed, uh, nor side arcs or yeah. rear arcs. I mean, also like Morta may be a really good choice because, like, as as chunky as the arcs are, they're very predictable on like where they need to go and where they want to go. So that predictability helps with Morta because she's able to reliably plan her double reinforced turn. I set that up. Yep. So Morna could be a pretty strong piece into the Padme. And she's not really... She's, she's only doing one attack, so... I mean, like if Padme... And she's usually, she's usually not taking a focus, right? She just has force. Mm -hmm. So she probably doesn't even... Padme doesn't really care about that at all. I mean, the proton torpedo is going to suck, but... <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna do two. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Max. If, if you get what you want, a double reinforce. Yeah. Yeah. So I was typing in uh, the word bonus attack into Yasby. Uh, I feel like a couple things are missing, but one of the pilots that popped up here, and I would like to know if you guys think it's viable. Um, Darth Maul. So, I think Darth Maul is in a potentially interesting spot in that I tried him for a couple games early in the points because he did go down to seven. Yeah. Uh, I5, two attacks. It's good. But just as a reminder, everyone, it's conditional in that when you shoot your first target, uh, you can spend two force to either shoot another target if you hit them, or if you miss them, you can go back at the same target you tried to shoot originally. Um, I think Maul specifically with Hate and mm -hmm. Palpatine crew um, can really mess with opponents' choices on their attacks and Maul, but I will encourage you... You've got to, like, take time and practice when you should decloak and when you should not. Because <laughs> <laughs> there you that mall will still definitely die. And if all you get for it is I stressed all their ships for my seven-point ship is dead, I think your opponent will take the seven-point ship is dead. <laughs> so um, you yeah, also I mean, got to like... make sure that if you stay cloaked – you might be okay staying cloaked the next turn because if you uh, the enemy ships got close enough to where and an obstacle's around you to where you can't de you physically don't have the space to decloak next next turn uh -huh. it's kind of a problem to also have to practice not getting in those situations either but, I mean you could fit uh, a list of Darth Maul, Grievous, Dirge and SSC T81 just the, the double shooting I5 Maul with stress giving with the three core ships, as I would call them, of Separatists right now. Um, not bad to try it out, I think. You just got to get good at the when to cloak, decloak, and getting your mall path right. Yeah. I mean, like, there are some ter there are some games that we've even streamed of, like, 
watching a scimitar just like not just like stay cloaked the entire game, right? And yep. take a single shot and then come out like miles ahead. Um, just make it, make the other player look like a fool in some <laughs> ways. It's just like I didn't even shoot you the whole time. I don't know what you're even. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's definitely value in staying cloaked. But there, yeah, like like you're saying, Ryan, like you have to practice of of like because they really can block your decloak to make sure that like, you cannot decloak that turn. So that may be one of those things where you have to practice like openings and make sure that. If if they set up like this, I set up like this, and just make sure your rock split rock placement is very good as well, because you you those that five k and those two sloops are like they're hard to land in a in a dense field. Love it. That's a good idea. Uh, so, Dion, mm-hmm. it's funny that you brought up these two because I actually have a. Connecting thread between two of yours, Ooh. the bonus attacks and decimators. All right. And I was trying to, I was trying to go through the list of people who can take tokens with born for this and barrage rockets being very popular. Uh, the upgrade I'm looking at that I don't see. I can't even remember the last time I saw it. Hot shot gunner. Oh, they force the focus expenditure either on defense or if you can't spend it on defense, you just lose it. Then. It's just gone. So I was uh-huh. look- now there's there's a problem, though. Okay. That hot shot gunner requires you to shoot a turret attack. So unless you can put a turret on your, say, Y wing. You're going to have a base turret for it. I actually was uh, found some pretty good candidates for it. Uh, one of them you mentioned, Rear Admiral Cherno. Put a hot shot gunner on him. He can shoot before most uh, of the barrage rockets and the Born for This ships at I-5. Uh, but you could also pair him with Flight Leader Ubel. Ubel also can take hot shot gunner, shoots his turret as a cannon uh he's got enough loadout for ion or synced your your preference there um and and you still get the free configuration then too uh so you could potentially have three hotshot gunner shots per round to be out there stripping tokens Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know what you do with the last eight points of that list other than uh, i threw four tie fighters in there because we're going to need something. Uh, something yeah, you need some agility. bodies there for sure. Yeah, yeah. in case Flight Leader Rebel and Rear will go down too fast. Um, but just a, as a thought process, maybe not both in the same list, but I know Rebel was tried a lot before. Um, Rack, I think we have, I can all agree, it has potential. Um, and utilizing the gunner slot doesn't interfere with your Jeff Troopers. Um, I don't, I think you can even get a force point in there. Death Troopers, Hot Shot Gunner, that's 10. Uh, so yeah, you can easily get 7 Sister uh, and be at 19 points uh, for a loadout. Uh, but actually, in my browsing around, mm-hmm. I found it in a different faction as well. This time, though, not I-5, I-6, with Dengar and Han. Both of them shoot turrets. Oh, and yeah. both of them have gunner slots. Uh in the situation you hotshot gunner Han twice, take both of his focuses array. No more Bistan attacking. Uh, same thing with like Tomax. Tomax, if you're if is attacked, can't shoot a barrage rocket anymore because they have to spend that focus token. Yeah, and we didn't even talk about you. You're bringing up those bombers. We hadn't even uh, mentioned them yet. Uh, those those are kind of like we talked about Padme and the arcs. Talk about Han mm-hmm. Solo. Like they're they're the next thing, right? They're they're definitely the yeah they're the, the, they're the next thing there. behind they're, the door. <laughs> it's probably Tie Bombers and Vader's kind of like the next t- in the next tier, yeah. like the the top tier right now of like high consideration is the Han and Trip Arc Padme. After that, I think Vader. High bombers and whatever you fill up the rest of the empire list. No, yeah, finish out the empire. Yeah, it, uh, someone asked me, someone reached out about uh, empire list. I was like, 
a six point fader and Tomax, and I don't think you can go wrong with whatever else you want in that list. <laughs> Have fun. Uh, just sprinkle yeah, it in. Just... Can't go wrong. There's a lot after that. Well, I mean, there's eleven but points, but be yeah. reasonable. Pick three ships, and you can't probably go wrong uh, after that. Uh, but uh, the uh, hot shotgun just got me thinking about. Uh, this journey of like taking tokens because tokens are becoming uh, more and more popular. We've seen it with FO. FO lives and breathes with jam. It's how it keeps itself alive, how it disrupts uh, the uh, the enemy. Uh, uh, Chris, we called his Gen Con list uh, fun police because you didn't get to play the action game. You uh, got to un roll unmodified attacks all the time. Uh, again, it's pretty defensive ships, surprisingly. Uh, Nant, uh, that thinking. So outside of FO, who jams probably the easiest out of any faction, I would say. Uh, uh, of course, it's always Scum. Scum's got the tricks. But Paylob, right now, you could be stealing their tokens uh, before they even have a chance to spend them. Uh, old T, as well, could strip your tokens. Uh, but more like generically, uh, we've really seen a fallout of false transponder coats. Uh, really, nobody's using them. Maybe a Django, like really like ships with crazy loadout. But we don't really see it as like the universal upgrade we used to. Mm -hmm. Granted, it did go up in points. Loadouts have, I would say, across the board gone down as well. So it kind of hurts to just throw it in on any ship with an illicit. But uh, is there... What other upgrades can really uh, disrupt the enemy um, that I'm missing out on? Like, especially their like tokens and stuff. They got pilots uh, like the... Paylob. Oh yeah, pay Paylob and Old T could just take them, just make them get rid of it. Yeah. We've we've seen a big downturn in electro chaff missiles. Mm, um, yeah. But I think yeah, those are pretty pretty hot. Uh, but I think electro proton bomb also gives is it jam or is it? It gives a weapons disabled, but that's weapons disabled. Yeah, that's a tricky weapons prospect. Weapons disabled on crit eyeball and hits his yeah. ion blanks his shield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean electro proton. I mean could really disrupt somebody. Um, but man, that's, that's a lot of like you throw that you throw that in the center. Yeah, you throw that in the center on like chance engagement, and it turns out <laughs> there's nowhere they can be. <laughs> uh, or if you throw that right down on the right down on the objective token. I mean, it would definitely be disruptive. There's not there's not a list out there that can be like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does that we could see that on? Uh, can doesn't there one of the bombers is potentially having a uh, trajectory simulator? Style that's a stand. Ability. That's a standard loadout. Ah, uh, of course. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, smart. It's the only way that card becomes printed. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, though the um, the customizable version of that pilot, Deathfire, um, can uh, drop the electro even if he's destroyed. So as long as you get to the center, it doesn't. Oh, man, can you imagine like just like, like a five or for like four straight, four straight, and just like. Shoot a, shoot a barrage yeah. rocket and drop that electro proton. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Just witness me. I'm Death Rain. Hello. Uh, how are you, Arcs, doing over here? Yeah, yeah. I heard you like them shields. Let me get them shields. <laughs> Let me get those shields before the rest of my ships show up. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of. Um, not. Um, is there, so, ba so the reason I went to like Hot Shot Gunner and stuff is I'm trying to emulate Padme in other factions, but I don't really think that that kind of widespread debuff is available. Well, Hot Shot's uh, more, definitely the, the, the most the, flexible one, I think. Uh, Marcel mentioned, uh, U-Winks, um, the... Oh, what's the uh, Magma. Um, Magma? Magma, thank you. I kept saying Marcus. I was like, I, was like, I can't be right. Magma Yaro, that is kind of a squad wide debuff where they can only roll one die at you. Um, or re roll one die, excuse me. 
One po- I, I mentioned this in GSP Discord, I think, last week. Um, Wild Mag VR, still good against many other things, like Luke's Proton Torpedo. Probably might need to roll reroll more than one sometimes. Or especially Padme's Proton Torpedo. Um, what it doesn't affect that a lot of people may think it would, it doesn't affect Han at all. Because Magma specifically re-roll. says reroll, and Han is not a reroll. Oh, painful. So, so there's in the Asbury. Yeah, oh. I mean, it's just like not. That's what makes Padme yeah, so it. unique is that it, it's not a common kind of a building. Yeah, the only other thing I can think of it that's like that impactful to a, that can be that impactful would be uh, that new super expensive Zai shuttle. Oh, tyranny! Oh, tyranny! tyranny. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. With like, that, it's a, in, in, it's a in the five I completely shuttle, forgot though. that ship's Just, ability. What is it? It makes you a uh, broken trust instead of a friend. Yeah, yeah. But I it don't think that would affect really hurt Padme. anything. Yeah, Padme doesn't need a No, friend. no, it, do, it doesn't, but I'm saying like that sure. The triple arcs, I mean, it does do something to the triple arcs. Maybe you would... Uh, I mean, in the triple arcs, you would put it on yeah, Jag, yeah. maybe? No, Oddball. No, I would selfless. say Jag. It turned off Selfless. Oh, it would turn off Selfless. It turned off Selfless, turn off selfless and, but with... and the locks. <laughs> Jag turns well, off the only locks. only Oddball's lock. I think Jag's, Jag ends up sharing... Yeah, because Jag, Jag locks... Jag can, Jag can lock from other friends. I don't know. Self- no, no. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, Jag you... gets locks from other friends, but also then gives it to Wolf to Wolf re-roll. Wolf pack. And then yeah, Wolf the, gives it back right back the to only him. Way so. that, the only way that Jag is going to get the log, lock for Wolf to use is usually by um, Oddball shooting. So if yeah, Oddball's not there to shoot. Oh, yeah, Wolf, Oddball's not there to shoot. shoot. Wolf, Wolf will have Wolf Pack if Wolf, Wolf has to shoot yeah, before Wolf, Jag yeah. anyway. Right. So then Padme, you have to use I four. I mean, uh, yeah, you have to use Padme Oddball. in that case. Oh, yeah. Sure. That seems but, like a lot of that seems like a lot of work to deny a target lock. Well, well, it's, it's also the selfless. Deal. Selfless yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, and the locks. The sure, no, don't don't give Padme a free lock. That way she can focus, please. But uh, also. <laughs> Uh, you bring in a five points eye shuttle, and I think in most cases, no thanks. Um, I think it may be worth a look at defenders. Um, wow, hot like elite defenders, hot hot take here. Okay, <laughs> uh, maybe right. Ju- um, Juke or elite? Uh, uh, regular. <laughs> okay. Ryan comes over here well, like the like, normal ones. Hey, Thank you. Hey, we just, we just hey. gotta clarify. Clarify in here. Chance to try it at some point, fun or not. Um, Defender Vader Elite with concussion missiles and malice. It's a lot of pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. If you if you, a, if you have not if you, you have not messed, ignore. Yeah. If you have not messed around with that, that will just put down six six to seven hits a turn. Oh. Nope. Yep. Yeah. With crits, <laughs> but um, I, I think defenders being um, yeah, focus of aid like Han's not exactly punching through that easy, and as long as you don't just park your defender in front of all the arcs of Padme, like you're probably coming out most engagements, maybe taking a damage or two. You just the the issue with all defenders have always been getting the damage output from their cost. Mm. Can you get uh, because, back nine points in the, in the, in the, well, uh, seven, fader. hopefully for like Rexler, yeah. right. Or, uh, I mean, I think it really is. But uh, really scarce technically is there too, but I think Rexler is going to be your, your number one choice. Right. But I mean, really what you're trying to do is you're trying to get over the value, right? You're like, can my seven point defender get me at least eight? Right. You're yeah. just trying to, trying to get, get, find that value. But with uh, you know, with arcs being medium base and Hans pathing, if he doesn't, if if he wants to be able to shoot twice and uh, doesn't ideally want to have to boost, I mean, Rexler Brath with Juke and HLC, some of those HLCs you might get some four die shots that matter. That's true. Uh, But you also have to build the rest of an Empire list with now a seven point ship. So you're looking at probably like a Rexler, a Vader, and then a four and a three. That's all you get. 
So whether it's like a Jonas and Tomax just dueling it up, or whether it's just Tomax and a f and another four pointer of your choice. You could bring the Crit Brigade with uh, Merrick, Rexler, Vader, and just Tomax because he's an efficient three points. With um, Merrick flipping, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Merrick I mean, choosing I mean, crits, and Rexler flipping crits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you also oh, have the op That's... option to go Rack and a seven point defender, and you still so have no six points left. You still have six on left. board. Oh, three ship. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's a lot of damage. It's not a lot of red dice. If it weren't for selfless, crits do quite a lot to arcs. Which, by the way... Just I, shoot eyeball first. Oh, so I was about to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know if oddball's the correct choice all the time. I think while it's good to get that selfless off the board, if you can engineer engagements to where you're on the fringe shooting Jag, turn one to get some of his shields off, just to wear him down. Soften him up a little so bit. So that next turn, you are either going in for the init kill completely on Jag, trying to burn through any selflesses that trigger and just kill Jag before he shoots, which is kind of a tall order, right? Because Padme could be looking at you, so you might get some of those unlucky rolls of multiple focuses. Um, or you just you don't get the firepower you need to kill Jack. But I think it's key if Jack only shoots once an entire game, however that happens, whether it's some plank damage and then you go for the kill, he's on one or two left and you didn't kill him, but you he's very maimed. And next turn you init kill him, he's shot once the entire game. Jack is one of the highest offensive outputs out of that whole list. I It might be worth sometimes just saying, I'm going to deal with Oddballs, Selfless, and Born for this, and him trying to do as best as possible to keep Jag and Wolf alive. But w one of these, Wolf or Jag, got to go down. And if you can let only and have only one of them shoot once the entire game, barring your objective presence versus their objective presence, you're probably looking pretty good. That's very true. All right, boys, any other servings for diamonds in the rough? I think I feel like we dug I, we dug pretty good there. I don't know. We didn't get enough autopilot drone, I thought. <laughs> you know, I thought um, Han Solo with a little autopilot drone action. Look, Will said Han Solo with hot shot gunner. So you just stick an autopilot drone on there. I mean, that's two shields Han, and a coordinate and both your three ships rounds of, one's of in the other. carrying a case. Like, like, hey, I'm going to round one. Nobody's going to shoot him because he's locked and loaded in here. Round two, I'm going to throw him that way. He's worth two points. He's going to grab this objective and coordinate. Or, and then the next couple rounds, he'll either coordinate, fly towards a do not enter proton bomb zone. That's th that's three points there. I mean, maybe maybe the autopilot drone will come and save us. Is what Marcel is saying. Maybe. <laughs> my my only other like diamond in the rough is usually just go to N ones, but like that's the boogeyman right now, so I don't yep. really know what to do. Oh, you're meta now. <laughs> you I are the meta, I don't, James. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> wait, wait. I know. Does I it, hate it. Is, is it one of them, like, if you do same-ish move, you mess with them in some capacity? Danae, if you know yeah. what, if you know what oh, Danae do, you do Danae right back at yeah. her? Yeah, Danae Ellen, er, Erlenberger, as Mr. Marcel would say. Are you defender perform an attack with the speed of your reveal maneuver? Oh, you just need to have the same speed? Just make it a speed. three. That's yeah. what Padme's going to do. Easy. But it's only while you defend a perform an attack against them, yeah. not when Padme does anything to anyone else. Yeah, so. she's they, not nearly as impactful. No. Uh, but I think also the there's another one that came out that does something similar. Uh, it's it's uh, the speed-based on one with rerolls instead of extra. Rerolls, thanks, 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 thanks. Yeah. Is it rerolls on primary and? Uh, it's on the defense. it's on the torp as well. Yeah, it's on anything. Mm. Yeah, mm. I just know him as the synchronized console Naboo. It is synchronized. It, it's it's Gavin Sykes. Uh, Sykes, while you defend a part form an attack, if the speed of your reveal maneuver is greater than the enemy ships, which is the same trigger as Rick, uh, you may reroll your blink results. Gotta go fast. 
Yeah, but he is an initiative three, but he does have a mod slot, which is friggin' and cool. I talked with someone earlier today who brought this up. Not yet sure about this pick, but I'm going to test it probably at some point. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that likes to lock right now. I mean, one of those popular ships in the game, Luke, likes to target lock with Torp. Vader. Um, Vader yep. has to lock if he wants to do a real Dude. offense. Um, uh, Malrus is in every FO list, wants to lock. People might be bringing more mag pulses in general for utility against arcs. Um, Aerosphere paint anyone in resistance? I mean, it may it, not stop him from locking, but it's a, it's annoying. I I had to face. It's annoying. Actually, I in one of my games, I played against a resistance player at Gen Con that had Ferrosphere paint on three out of the five X wings that they brought. It was it, it was infuriating because they <laughs> because of the, the 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 lock shenanigans that you have like it it was you would it, almost it was not a good double time. triple stress jag sometimes you could then. double stress yeah. jag yeah because you like oddball shoots you get the lock so if you want a lock would you like a stress you're like oh fine i'll take the stress and then wolf shoots if he spends wolf pack because ideally wolf probably wants to try and save it like on the initial engagement wolf kind of wants to use jags on the far ranging shot because he's still probably gonna be shooting out the front when you get to range one where you could still use wolf pack in the next turn or save your reroll in case wolf in case jag dies or some other movement doesn't allow you to get that lock, lock back um so if wolf shoots with and use wolf pack and jag wants to get that lock back well jag has to go but do I want to be double stressed? Hmm. I don't know. Does Padme want to be stressed if she passive sensors something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would really limit her three speed, three speed or faster maneuvers. Three straight or three bank, really. Yeah. Uh, that is interesting. The uh, resistance, while they have, I think, like limited high tier pilots. Man, they have a lot of upgrades accessible to them between like droids and uh, tech. Mm -hmm. I, I just I do remember, droids. like not uh, as an Empire player, I just I just took this dress. I was like, we're jousting. I don't care. Uh, I'll yeah. take them. It's definitely on the resistance player to not just end up in a spot where your opponent doesn't care about doing the blue move next turn. Like, you have to make it something that's punishable, whether it's, oh, they're probably doing a blue move, so I'm going to now put this box of terrible guns pointed at them, because I know generally where they're going to be. Or, um, if they want to... I don't know. If Vader wants to do a certain order of actions, or Vader wants to be in a spot to K-turn next turn, a boy Vader, mm. you know, things that you limit them from allowing them to do. So oh. that's true. On like a, on the starter pack Vader, they're your objective Vader. Uh, you can't lock and then focus barrel roll because you'll You'd be have stressed to do after it the in, lock. Um, some other order of operations. Interesting. Well, I'm thinking the, like the linked action, but yeah. Oh, sure. Um, that's interesting. Which is weird because. Uh, for people who may not remember, Ferrosphere was reworded in Errata um, to where that ship gains a stress token unless it chooses to break its lock. So mm. I'd say the weird part about that, if you're taking it to an event, is um, make your opponent very aware at the beginning of the game that these are the ships that have Ferrosphere paint. Because it's a must if it triggers, by the way. So yeah. it's a terrible thing to have to try and fix game state-wise if you get too far <laughs> down the road. Um, <laughs> but on top of that, um, it, it it's something that it it's weird because it feels gotcha-ish, right? Because you want them to be aware of everything you have available to you. But it's pretty much either A, forcing them to make difficult decisions if they know about it. Which is okay, that's its intent. If they forget about it, then it's like the, oh, if I would have remembered, I would have taken this action instead. And mm -hmm. then you get the whole, like, decorum of the table issue happening right there. Yeah. It's, 
the best thing I think, and someone, any judges out there who may be listening, like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on like how you would expect players to handle like a Ferrosphere interaction. Because I, I, I think if I were taking this to event, I would upfront just tell the person like, these are all the ships that have Ferrosphere. I'm going to make this as, as clear as possible. And this is what's going to happen if you target lock one of them and you don't have them in bullseye. If you forget, and like that, while you go to take a lock, and, we, and there hasn't been any like conversation of what other actions you're thinking about doing, or whatever it may be, and you and you and you forget, you put the lock down, and I go, okay, that triggers Ferrosphere. If you do the oh, whoops, can I do another thing? Like you get that question every single game, and yeah. to be fair, everyone across the board, you just got to be like. Probably not, man. It's like, like, it's like I'm you know, to be as clear you, as possible. You, you, you paid, you paid the points for no, it. No, this is what you, you say. You also, yes, yeah. you can do some other thing. You, you can, uh, you can get the stress, or you can remove the lock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> those, those, yeah. those, those give two options. I mean, it, I, uh, I'm, I'm normally not the you... gotcha type of guy, but yeah. it's, it's the weird part with the thing is it's a must. So if you do uh, it, right. that's why I just want to make it as clear as possible to my opponent before the game starts. Yep. This yes. is kind of like a personal experience of that uh, question for you, Ryan. Do you recommend they lock something else? Do you say, that guy has ferrosphere paint? Or do you... Um. Do so, you, so I, I will say my my opponent my opponent at Gen Con, when I said, all right, that gets locked, he goes, he goes, he goes, just so you know, ferrosphere paint. And I was like, I was like oh, you're right. And at the, by by that time we already had a good we had a good vibes going, sure. so so. But it was yeah. It's it is. That's one of those where I see right right, and you're like I don't know how to answer this question because it's it puts it puts everybody in an awkward situation. Yeah, and then it's you, the what, what the reality is. They're gonna go by the rules of All whatever right. happens. So like the best mm -hmm. thing you can do for an opponent if you're bringing Ferrosphere is be completely upfront with them at the beginning. Tell them exactly what it does and tell them try and be as clear as to what ships have it. And I, I generally like talking with my opponents. So if they're they're talking about their actions and what they might do and they're mm -hmm. thinking about it, I'll talk with them. I'll, you know, I'll be like, what are your pros and cons of things that you could do? And it just so Ferris here becomes a, a difficult decision decision to decision point for them, which is fine. But there could definitely be some players who are like they're excited to do their thing. They're like, I got them. I'm gonna lock them and torp them. And I go. Would you like a stress? Or would you like to <laughs> remove your lock? And they go, oh. oh, it also super messes up um, tie BAs. If you use the tie BA ability. Oof. Bond rag, no <laughs> Oh, yeah. To get yeah. a free lock. Yeah. Better have proud tradition, you know? <laughs> better. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> the, um, William, you said lock somebody else you can't because by the time you said i'm locking this person it doesn't I, say that's kind of why i was trying to figure out where the yeah, line yeah. was where it was yeah like, because you're saying that ship has fear my, my lock this one is target lock action so when you take a lock action not you would measure yet. everyone around right mm -hmm. so and then you choose that's the one i want if you if that's the thing if like they if choose you say it, you're locking that like, and then that's i was just choice. wondering if the if you like it, when you would warn them, do you warn them while they're say, I'm going to target lock somebody or do you, it sounds like you just said at, at the beginning of the game. I think the at the beginning of the it. game, you just say, don't I target do lock me. I would game and then like, I, as I like said, I'm someone who generally has open discussion with people, especially when they're in their action choices. So like they have as much information as I'm, as, as like I would have in my head so that mm -hmm. like they're not making a decision based off of something they forgot they're making a decision based off of everything available which by the way most of the time i give my opponent everything laid out there because it's all difficult decisions and they yep. have to choose <laughs> and that it's, that it's uh what they it's call always it generally on information but it's also like it's a lot of stuff to decide between right you're, you're, I, was, you're I played in, a lot of um, instituting decision like, fatigue go ahead will sorry no you're okay i played a lot of greedo and at a certain point I just played as if my opponent knew Greedo was active, like just taking cards face up and stuff like that, because um, it it doesn't feel good to like do the gotcha part of it. Yeah. So, so but that's a lot easier because it's just like, is it on or is it off? Uh, a little bit different than I'm gonna be like, you know what? You would be a great idea to barrel rolled. I will target lock that guy before I K turn. 
<laughs> well, nope, you are not. Again, you're not a target you just guy. break the lock and then it's like, oh, well, all right. Sure. Interesting. Like, I had one where uh, I faced a local of mine who brought a lot of T-70s and some of them had Ferrospheres, similar to what Dion talked about. And I was trying out uh, Bodico with mm-hmm. Mando Optics, Predator, etc. And Bodico had done a linked action or something in the previous round, so it was already stressed. And I go to Mando Optics, and I go, I'm going to Mando Optics that ship. And they go, would you like a stress? And I go, oh, there goes a Mando Optics charge. That, <laughs> lock. That's, that is the appropriate <laughs> answer. I was like, I assume yeah. you're taking the stress. <laughs> uh, wow. Really? Uh, that's, that's still pretty good. So you, the answer, though, is bring Ferris around everybody in your squad. Just to make things easier. I have... I have made a list that had at least four out of the five ships have Ferrosphere. Oh. If you if you, you want them, you fireball. can have them. <laughs> the fireball can't take it, huh? Oh, the fireball has notorious and false transponder codes, so oh, go it's ahead bad, and lock that as, one too. <laughs> yeah, can't lock that one either. Yeah. Uh, that's smart. That's smart. I like that. So, if you would like to lock anything in my list, you will have consequences. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't know yet if it's good, but I'll try it. That's, you know what? Sometimes bringing to the table that thing that's a little bit weird is enough to get you over the edge. Because you you just create enough decision fatigue in your opponent going, I wasn't expecting that. Like, for instance, at Gen Con, I played against two scum squads. And I was just like, What? They were at the bottom of our rankings. Why am I playing against scum right now? I was so confused when they rolled up with scum ships. But oh, and wasn't one of them like had a YV that wasn't Afra or Bosk? It was Morallo. Uh, that wasn't me, but yes, that wasn't against me. But yes, that that was that was there. Oh, that John. It was Jonathan Babcock who he went to face. It was Patrick Patrick who brought Morallo and a bunch of like weird scum things. Yep. And he yep. just he just thought it was Bosk or Afra, and like first turn he flew off the board. He's like, "Did you mean to do that? Do you want to fix your dial?" And he's and he's like, "No, it's Morello." And he went, "Oh, <laughs> 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 I didn't pay attention." Yeah. By the way, shout out to Patrick Patrick. Hopefully, he's feeling better. He threw out his back at Gen Con. Uh, yeah, hopefully, he, he, he lost a very he won his first game at Gen Con. He lost a very close game to Jonathan Babcock, twenty-one to twenty. And, it, and it, uh, apparently Jonathan hurt him so bad. He went to the hospital, man. He was at the hospital. He ripped his heart out with that close uh, loss. Almost 2-0 with a scum list with Morallo, two Royal Guard Mandos, Lapin, uh, uh, Mining Guild, and uh, some other ship. I don't. He was trying to was put scum villainy off. on his back, and it just it didn't work out. It was it's, too much. It was too much. Yeah. Too, he- too heavy. <laughs> awesome. All right, boys. Well, uh, this has been a great discussion. Trying to find some diamonds in the rough. Anything for the good of the order before we uh, we end the podcast and do some after dark talking about uh, sleep training. If people are really that curious, I will, I will spill the beans. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had a question for Ryan, but it's uh, maybe after dark about uh, his experience so far with Baldur's Gate. We All can... right, yeah, we'll, we'll hit that. All right, save it for the BG. Save it for the BG. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching. Be smart. Be safe. Gold Squadron out.